Good morning, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Today I really wanted to jump nice and early to prepare for a painting. My mom came to visit me yesterday and she gave me these beautiful tulips. Saw them and they're opening up this morning and I was like, I have to paint them. They're so incredible. Look how beautiful they are. They're just starting to open up a little bit. They're like a cream yellowish color. Check it out. Thanks, mom. You're the best. I love you. I can't wait to paint these and maybe we'll make it into like a cool character scene or maybe there'll be a still life. Who knows what I'll think of later. I figured I'd get a little bit productive today, share with you guys some tips and then we'll come back to the easel and start painting together. And as promised, I wanted to share how I make stickers. I recently turned Matilda into a character. You guys have really all voted to make stickers. So I thought I'd share how I do that and some tips with you guys on digitizing your artwork. We'll pack some orders. We'll pack some Patreon. Oh, look who's here. Hey, are you excited to make stickers? She went to her little bed. <laughs> Let's go to the computer and I'll share with you guys some tips on how I do that. Oh, and don't worry, we'll be back to the studio later. In a previous sketchbook tour, you guys remember this character I created from Matilda, and everybody voted for this to become a sticker. Everyone was for it, so I figured I'd use this as an example on making the sticker pack. Maybe I'll have these as separate, maybe you guys can vote, but yeah, let's get started. Oh, and I still can't get over this custom embossed sketchbook that I just did. So check this video out if you haven't already. I can't wait to start painting inside too. So there's going to be a few things you're going to need. Number one is your artwork that you're going to digitize. In this case, I'll use this as an example. You'll also need a scanner. I prefer scanners rather than photographs. However, when it's a really, really large painting, I'll photograph it in sections and then kind of puzzle it in one piece in Photoshop. You'll need a program that you clean up your artwork in, and I like to use Photoshop for this. You can also use Procreate your artwork, a scanner, and a program that you're gonna use to clean up your art. This is the scanner that I use. I already plugged it in. I'm going to turn it on. Now, the reason why I prefer scanning is because since this is a flatbed scanner, they make them in different sizes. This is the Epson Perfection V550 Photo. Since it's a flatbed scanner, when I place it inside the scanner, it's going to give you the best reproduction of the artwork. And I'll share with you some tips on the settings itself. But this is why I really love scanning instead of taking photos, because when you take photos, you can still make it happen, but for smaller pieces, I feel like it's so much easier to scan. Depending on the size of your scanner, you'll have to position your sketch or your paper right inside where you're going to be able to have the scanner completely scan the image. So since this comes off a little bit, I'll have to do two rounds of scanning. So I'm going to scan this section and then I'm going to scan this section. I just place it nice and flat. I align it carefully. I close this and I hold it so it doesn't move very gently. Let's jump into our computer. I use Mac depending on the kind of computer you have. That will determine the program you use to scan. I like to use Image Capture. It comes with the Mac. You'll hear the scanner starting to work. It does a noise. So as long as everything's connected, it'll sense the scanner there. Here's our first section. And now we have to look at the settings. Now your computer is gonna have a little bit of a different setting perhaps, but here are the three things that you need to think about. Number one is obviously set it in color unless you want it to be in black and white. Then you're gonna have the colors be in millions or billions, I guess millions works. And the resolution, I like to set 300 DPI and up. So depending on how big you want to blow this up, you want to have a higher resolution scan so that it really captures all those details, which is why a scanner works great for that. So I'll do 400 right now. And I already sectioned off each and every little 
uh, illustration that's going to become a sticker. I'll call it tilde one and then I'll save it at tilde two, tilde three. Format, this is very important. So all of these have a different size and capture different detail. JPEG is great, but it'll be less detailed than a PNG. And if you want the highest quality, a TIFF file will give you the highest quality, but it'll also be the biggest file. So keep that in mind. All right, so the first three illustrations are scan. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other two that are on the other page. And I'll show you guys what we're going to do after. All the scans are complete. Now we should check them and we might need to flip some images and just make sure that the scan is good before we bring it into the program. Oh, these are going to be so cute. So I'm just triple checking and flipping them to make sure that they're upright. Each scan is separately brought into a Photoshop file. And now I'm going to be removing the background around with the eraser tool and the magic wand tool. So this is where I'll clean up and really, really get down my final shape of the sticker because the actual die cut is the most important part. So once I finish that, I'm just gonna adjust the colors and then I can upload to my manufacturer. One thing I want to mention when you're getting your files ready, there's something called CMYK and RGB color. Yes, I'm paying attention to you. <laughs> if you're printing this yourself or if you're ordering this from a manufacturer, you want to look at the file setup that they want. So really make your research, order some samples if you're looking at a manufacturer and you'll see which one's best and then you can decide who to order from. Okay, yeah, wow guys, do you see this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You're the best assistant. You're the best assistant. Now that I have cleaned up the borders and the overall shape, I'm going to be working on just brightening up the colors by adjusting the levels. Sometimes, depending on your sketch and depending on your painting, you might need to do a little bit more tweaking. The less work you can do in post and the less work you can do at the end, the better. I do have a white layer. If I turn this off, you'll see these checkered board around. The white layer just allows me to see the edges clearly and I'll like really zoom in to see it sometimes. The fact that there's no white border around right now is because some printing companies will put it for you and some will not. And sometimes I'll bring it into Procreate and outline it and sometimes I'll bring it into Illustrator and just add a stroke which will give a perfect outline around the image just continue to clean up the final touches and that's pretty much it just time consuming and prep is the most important and that's it I think it's finally done I feel like I can continue to work on it and work on it oh hey Matilda came to check in on it to see if it looks good. You like it? All right. Just walk on by. I also want to show you how I scanned from the same sketchbook. It was this painting. That was the giveaway for May. Here it is. I just want to share how I did the same process with a print. Here's the proof and here's the original scan. You can see that there's a sketchbook border all the way around and there's a lot of like jaggedy edges. So what I did was I cleaned it up with an eraser, made it nice and crispy. And this is the proof that the printing company sent me. Whenever you outsource, you can always ask for a proof, which is basically a preview of how your print is going to look. Now, you have to keep in mind that the lighting on your computer is different, the lighting on their computer is different, so the best thing you can do is to set up your file how they ask, and if they usually don't have it on their website, you can always email someone and ask. So getting these things done and being proactive about it will really help your print and how it turns out in the end. I have uploaded the Matilda stickers and they're off and printing, so stay tuned on my website for those. I also ordered 
this print which i picked the winners for the giveaway announced it on my instagram so congratulations guys i picked five winners and i'll be sending them to you guys as soon as they arrive if you'd like to purchase this print of this portrait i am having it available on my website for a limited time so be sure to check that out as well it's been a pretty pretty busy month i want to share some things that happened and shine light on all the little things that i'm constantly doing because i feel like i have four businesses i'm catching in all at once time management has been key so let's take a look I just unboxed these sunflower prints and they came out oh my goodness they look even better in person and the quality looks so good uh, the paper is nice and thick the colors are perfect and I really like this new size I tried the 11 by 17 so it's a little longer and I think it looks really cool as a poster and since she's a flower I think it looks really good with the composition as well so I'm super happy yeah it's the best feeling when you outsource your prints and then they arrive and they're done i pretty much did all the edits that i needed to the video is uploaded right on time not on a saturday but on a sunday but still made it to have a video uploaded this week i'm really happy it's a pretty great art haul so if you want to check it out i'll have it linked somewhere above here um, but now i'm just going to clean this up and let's see i have plenty of orders to pack so that's on the agenda next um by the way do you guys like this format i flipped the calyx unit because it used to stand like that but now i kind of flipped it up and i feel like i like it as a shelf more i might even move this one on this side but yeah even when you move into a new space there's always going to be adjustments that will best suit your functionality so it's all a work in progress and you try this you try that and you see what works best for you okay let's get to packing orders I'm supposed to be unboxing prints and you are just, you're going to get fur everywhere. cat can do something that an assistant can do, right? So these prints were on pre-order and they came out absolutely beautiful. Honestly, one of the best prints that I have reproduction wise, the quality is fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is just package these up, go back to all the orders since they were pre-orders. So I'm finally going to be able to get them out to you guys. So thank you all if you've purchased the print. Thank you so much. So that's what I'm going to work on now. and. Maybe I have to start training Matilda to help me package things. <laughs> Studio assistant is sleeping on the job. I'm starting out by laying out all of the prints in order and I slowly make my way down by signing each one. Now I constantly get asked how come I sign in pencil. Even if you look this up online, it's known that art collectibles are typically favored by collectors who sign in pencil. Many successful artists that I follow as well, I constantly see them signing in pencil. And I also think this has something to do with marking ownership and making sure that people know that you're the sole creator. Plus, I feel like it gives it an authentic touch. And speaking of which, I continue to do my personalized thank you notes. And ever since designated a specific time to pack orders, and after doing it for some time, 
I basically came up with a workflow that works really well. Definitely after placing everything at hand, my packaging became much quicker, but taking care of things in bulk and in order, I found works really well. Although I share these moments with you in the vlogs, and I feel any artist who does really, it never does justice on how much time and effort actually goes into it. But it's also great for me to look back and see how much I've learned, how workflow and functionality have improved, and also this can be a way for you to hang out with me. Packaging up the larger prints in the tubes definitely requires the most movement, so I like to stand while I do this and just, again, take care of things in bulk. Some tubes included smaller prints, where some customers added another print, so I sectioned off the orders by type, and I was able to get things done pretty quickly and efficiently. Last order is done. Oh, it's a good feeling of getting things done and feeling accomplished. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for your support and leaving all of these amazing notes. I love reading through them. I think it's like the highlight of my day. It's just amazing to see the locations, like everything goes all over the world. So I'm super grateful that I have you guys. I'm so happy that my art can go into your homes and bring you warmth as well and smiles. So yeah, it's uh, truly, truly an amazing feeling. Now it's time for a quick lunch break and then maybe do some sketching outside. Do you ever get involved in a task and forget to eat? Story of my life. <laughs> But wait, guess what's here to save the day? Our incredible sponsors, Cook Unity. And yep, you've read that right. Thanks to Cook Unity, you can enjoy a variety of meals which are made by chefs from around the country to be enjoyed right in your kitchen. They are the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared pre-selected meals right to your door weekly. I easily chose my meals online and they come fully cooked. It's been saving me so much time with my busy schedule. They have a wide selection for your dietary preference. The meals I chose all look delicious, but let's see what I'll have today. Welcome to the kitchen, the dining table. Today I'm going to have the Tuscan butter chicken and each meal has a chef. So the chef for this meal is Andres Mendez. And it's so easy because all you have to do is preheat the oven to 350, remove the sleeve, salt and sauce, heat up to 15 minutes or until heated thoroughly, pour sauce on top and you're done. So easy. So you take the film off, you take the sauce out, and I'm just gonna pop this right in the oven and that's it. I just can start eating. I'm so excited. Yummy. I'm generally a really big foodie and I absolutely love the quality ingredients these meals have. The chefs cook meals with real ingredients, nothing artificial, with humanly raised meat and organic ingredients when possible. And let's say you wanna order for another week, through your weekly subscription, you can select from a robust, ever-changing menu of handcrafted meals. In my last week's order, I loved the spicy chicken tenders. The coconut lime hanger steak was unbelievable. Honestly, they were all delicious. I also think their portions are perfect. Go to cookunity.com or click the link in the description and use my code JESSCARP50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. And now that my belly is full and satisfied, I'm gonna head to the post office to drop off these packages. After dropping off the packages at the post office, I couldn't help but sit down and sketch from life. Although I had plenty of edits to do and work to complete, I told myself, hey, it's okay to sit down and enjoy this moment, and I'm so glad that I was able to capture it. I 
I got back to the studio right in time to watch the sunset and then I spent the rest of the evening packing Patreon mail. You can actually take these little stickers and customize the little stamps. How cute is that? Oh my god. You guys are gonna love these. I definitely got carried away with little monsters. <laughs> so cute. I feel like each one of them has a personality of their own. This definitely was a lot of fun, but I'm pretty tired and ready to go to bed. All of the Patreon mail is officially oh, packed and it's time to get some sleep. Although Matilda was having a sleepy slow morning, and for once so was I, little did she know I had some new presents for her. Since she spent so much time in the studio with me, I decided to find her some fun toys and maybe I'll figure out a way to position this window cat bed up there. She's been loving watching the birds, so I got her a few fun toys to keep her occupied while I'm busy. I found these that make little noises when she plays with them, and she fell in love immediately and it was hilarious to watch. She still decided to be by my side though. I spent a little bit of time editing, and lately I've really been making sure that I show up and make time to sketch. I began reading Atomic Habits by James Clear, and one of the best ways to form positive habits is simply to just show up. And as there's always something we can improve, this is a conscious action I've been really trying to keep as my days get busier and busier. I rarely sketch at night, because I feel like my creativity thrives during the mornings. However, sometimes I felt myself finishing my days in the evenings, but here are some of the sketches that I've been making so far. You'll surprise yourself what you can create by simply showing up to the page.
See, I told you we'd make it back to the easel. For this new painting, I really wanted to just slow down and create from within. I found that artists' best work comes from topics that they love, memories that they hold close to their hearts, stories that they just can't forget. So with that in mind, I was extremely eager to begin thinking about an idea for this tulip painting. So let's begin brainstorming. I didn't know which direction to go in first. All I knew is that I wanted it to be really special, since it was a gift from someone special who I hold really close to my heart. Whenever starting and planning a new painting, I get the gears going by trying out as many little thumbnail sketches from life, from imagination, and during these moments, I'm really digging deep and seeing how far I can push the concept. At first, I had an idea to just paint a still life from life, so I positioned the tulips in all these different angles and tried to find the best lighting, but then I couldn't help but once again see a character in them. But I really wasn't sure if I liked how it was coming out. And eventually, I reached a point where I was stuck and realized I may have been overthinking it. What do you do when you hit a slump? You take a short break, have some ice cream, and try again. I collected my thoughts, did some research, and really began to dig deep on the symbolism that I wanted to convey. After taking plenty of photos, doing three more pages of sketches both traditionally and digitally, I decided to go with a different route. One that I've always feared, a self-portrait. So I just spent quite some time sketching out different tulip characters, playing around with composition. I wasn't sure if I should have something a little more close up, a little more further away. Maybe I was just going to paint me holding the tulips. I didn't know which route to go, but I think I've got it. I positioned things digitally as well with some sketches. And I put together some pictures that I took of myself as reference to help me get this idea that I have going. And it's all just like simmering inside right now. And I just need to get it on a panel. So I'm going to wait no further. I'm going to try to get the projector on to transfer over onto my board. This is definitely going to be a painting that I'll be painting over a period of time. And I really miss painting large and painting in oil. So that's the plan for this one. I currently have the 18 by 24. I think this one's pretty good. But what if I really push the limits and go big this time? Hmm?
Okay, it's unwrapped. That means that it's official. This is gonna be a painting. It's gonna happen. So let's get the sketch on here and get to priming. I don't know, but it's complicated. That's right, I'm going all in on this big piece, 36 by 48 inches. I really enjoyed drawing with pencil straight onto the wooden panel. And I have to say, I was so happy with the meaning that I chose for this piece. Pure love is a theme and topic that I'm super passionate about, so I figured go big or go home, right? As the sun was setting, I was fully captivated by this piece. It felt so good to stand up and move around and put my whole body into it. I felt so inspired, so driven, and extremely determined to create. Yes, it was a little bit fearful with the size, and I was ambitious. However, it's all part of the journey and it's all part of the challenge. And as soon as I was ready to take on that challenge, I just played some music, set the scene, and just got lost in the zone. In this very moment, I chose to practice gratitude. The moment felt so surreal. I was radiating happiness and I was once again reminded how happy I am when I'm painting and just at the easel creating. I was greeted with an unbelievable sunset. The sky was yellow and purple and pink and I just won't ever forget it.
beautiful evening accompanied by this incredible sunset. I think I'm gonna call this done for right now. The sketch is complete and it's looking great. I'm really happy to create something where I'm moving around and just having my whole body in this giant panel. This is gonna be a really good one. I'm really excited and I'm just trying to take in this moment. And in the morning, I'm gonna seal it and then I'm going to apply some acrylic base tone and just keep it moving. So this is gonna be a long work in progress, but I 